F. Scott Hess is our guest on Modern Art Blitz. And my first question, of course, has to be, what's the F for? Frederick. Frederick. But you don't want to be called Freddie Hess? There are so many Fredericks in my family already. Oh, really? Oh, Going so it's a family thing. The middle of the 1800s so, uh, and maybe long before that. So. You, know, you know your family tree? I do. Going back 400 years in America and supposedly 2,000 years before that. So. They measured it 2,000 years? It all becomes baloney. Oh, okay. I, I, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Whew, man. Uh, pilgrims? No, uh, 1634 was on the Mary and John of the earliest that I know of. I did a whole show about this. That was really? The uh, paternal suit, the heirlooms of the F. Scott Hess Family Foundation. You, you painted a... Uh, it painted went your... to five venues across the country. Oh, my God. Long Beach Museum of Art was the one locally. Now, you're, you're from Long Beach or you live in Long Beach now? No, I live in uh, Los Feliz. Los Feliz? Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, good question. Baltimore, born in Baltimore, lived in Florida, lived in Wisconsin, lived in Vienna, and lived in L.A. since 1984. That Vienna, that Vienna stop, you know, historically a lot of people have stopped <laughs> off in Vienna before they went on to great things, you know. Yeah. Ooh, okay, so, um, um, so, but you're not a Baltimorean, that type of, you know. I that. left at the age of one. Oh, okay, so you're so, not a Floridian? Yes. Uh, Florida left that at the age of 10. Mm. Sort of more Wisconsin. Wisconsin? Yeah. Packer fan? Indeed. All right, there we go, man. <laughs> Jeez, man. Were you rooting for the Falcons, I, though, against the Patriots? When we moved from... Uh, Florida to Wisconsin, it was the time of Vince Lombardi. Oh, and perfect timing. So my dad was a big football fan, okay. so I saw okay. all those games. So who'd you root for in the Super Bowl? Um, Atlanta. You did, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ugh, boy. Yeah, okay. Brady's got enough. Yikes. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. Rogers could use a few more, though. Huh? Rogers could. Uh, maybe an 18. Okay, so what, uh, whoa, we're, we're looking at here, how big is this painting, first and foremost? Because it uh, looks like we're midgets compared I to I think it. it's about... Four and a half, five feet across the bottom, something like that. Oh, okay. So it's it's a it's a big square. Yeah. Um, unlike us. <laughs> so uh, so uh, uh, what's more going rectangular? What, what's going on here? Uh, that's my wife and I dancing. Wow. <laughs> and and you you're shifting the perspective. How many perspectives have you you shifted on? Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on there. So the, some of the rooms are upside down, some are right side up, and they're all expanding and disintegrating. Uh, and it's everything in our home basically. So. Uh, everything you cataloged? Pretty and much everything. You didn't I like went through <laughs> every room and, and just photographed it and then went into the studio and made it float. Okay. Um, so it, it took me a lot longer than most paintings. So you're, 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 you're obviously painting from what would, one would call starting off a realistic style, but you're looking for some kind of magical realism. Is that how you would quantify it? Um, I don't know if I'd call it magical realism. I was at, in the Academy of Fine Art in Vienna and um, the teacher that I had, the professor, the Meister Schuler. Uh, owner <laughs> um, was Rudolf Hausner, and he was a fantastic realist. This group uh, that would be a lot like lowbrow here. Oh, okay. Um, and so that was my painting training, and before that, I did erotic art at the University of Wisconsin. Erotic art? Erotic art. No, wait, 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 I mean, everybody I does a little erotic of, art in, the, in, in college. I mean, tell I me started out here. at the age of seven <laughs> and uh, did that exclusively all the way through college. And my first solo show in Vienna was erotic art. Wow, what year was that? Uh, 1979. Wow. So you've been showing since 79. That was, yeah, that was the first solo, so I showed a little bit before that in group shows. And What's the longest gap you've had between 1979 and we're, we're shooting this now, 2017? What's the largest gap between shows that you've had in that time? Um, if you're talking solo shows, probably three, four years, something like that. There have been uh, three and four year gaps. In yeah. Uh, when I started out in the 80s in L.A., I was doing them every year and a half, something like that. But uh, a little bit slower now. And if we add group shows, then uh, there hasn't been any years that I didn't show. No? No, no you just never said, I'm going to, this is the year. The resume is going to be empty. They'll call the no, historians will wonder no. what was he doing then? His yeah. lost year. You didn't have a lost year. Or you got rid of the lost year before, <laughs> right? You lost year and then you hop on the uh, exhibition bandwagon. There's never been a lost year. No? I just keep making this stuff. Well, what, okay. what else are you going to do? How many paintings do you, would you say you do a year? Uh, probably about 15. 15? Yeah. On the average of the, the scale? Or I mean, you have uh, smaller ones too, scale. right? I've got some smaller ones yeah. too. Yeah, they're not all the size of that one. And, and what are we looking at here? Uh, this is called Good Luck from, I think, 2015. And it's a couple of businessmen who are... Uh, in a rain of money and carrying a box with their dog. Wow. How big is this dollar bills. Uh, probably about five and a half feet tall, something like that. And each one was a unique bill? 
<laughs> or did you use the same bill as a model? Um, for <laughs> <laughs> I got good enough that I could just make them up. Yeah, you make them yeah, up? I could, Sarah, be, a, I could be a counterfeiter. The, the, oh, okay. I, I, and I, well, tell me your name again. I don't know you. <laughs> you, you this thing is on, we archive on YouTube, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, now, c can I ask, is realistic painting, I mean, the, 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 are, is the death of realistic painting or, um, exaggerated? Um, I think when I first came to LA, there were probably about a dozen people doing something similar, and now there are thousands. So really, the death I would say is is, uh, is greatly exaggerated. Greatly exaggerated. Wow. I think you know, lowbrow had a lot to do with it, but I think also in Southern California, you had uh, you know the animation studios that always needed people who could draw, um, and so there was always somebody that could teach it. And then when there was a re renewed interest, well, what about you could learn it? What about that pit? of despair called New York City. Yeah, who wants to go there? <laughs> Have you ever shown in New York? Uh, I've shown in group shows in New York, and yeah. I had a gallery there for a little bit, uh, Herschel and Adler, but uh, Her it that's... didn't go. It anywhere. didn't go well with Herschel and Adler? No. Who do you show with in Southern California? Uh, Greg Escalante now. Gregorio so, Escalante Gregorio Gallery. Gregorio Escalante In gallery, Chinatown. Right next to Coagula. Wow, um, I've, I've heard so, of that because it is my neighbor. Yes. Um, so so uh, what, uh, when is your next show there? Uh, January of 2018. Oh, God, do I gotta wait that long? Gotta wait that long. Wow. So, um, and you'll, you'll have cranked out 14 paintings by then? I hope so. Yeah? Yeah. Is there a theme? Are you working under any themes? No, I, I just let it run and sometimes a theme becomes obvious. You don't work, because they always tell artists, work in series. You don't, you don't work don't in series. don't worry about it anymore. No? no? You're just gonna make the art you wanna make? That's right. Now, do you have, um, obviously you're getting friends who hit you up when are you gonna paint a portrait of me? Does that happen uh, a lot? Not as much as you'd think. I usually am pretty brutal when I do a portrait, so. Uh, oh, you could, you could, you know. If, I, if someone's I vain, forget it. I can't flatter too easily, so ah. I don't get a lot of, uh, no? uh, you know, people don't say, come and do my portrait. Have you, have you ever done a commission portrait? I have, I've done yeah. a few of them. Like, uh, like, any, like not presidents, but governors or anything? Um, collectors usually of my oh. work who already know what to expect. Really? Yeah. And and is I, it, I did a whole bunch of portraits back in the 80s. I did 64, each one 18 by 24 inches, and they all hung together. Really? Um, so conceptual just, project? Yeah, covered a whole wall. That was and, and who were the portraits project. of? Uh, half of them were of collectors, and half were of friends, uh, mostly artists. Mostly artists? Like yeah. both sides of the war? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was sort of, you know, you're, you paint a little differently when the, the collector is the one being painted. So oh, yeah? I figured that would happen, and you kind sure of enough, be, you're, gotta be yeah, nice you're just there. a little looser with your friends. I put, you a little more, <laughs> put a little more rouge in her cheeks there, huh? No, they're... They were sold in advance, and then uh, eight, oh. <laughs> eight of them backed out. And there's the secret. Oh, there's the secret, folks. <laughs> yeah, um, eight of them backed out. So, so let me ask you, I mean, look, we live in times where there's still a great critique. Uh, you know, do you like abstract painting, or do you enjoy? Well, some abstract painting I like. Yeah? Um, who's who's your favorite? I don't really get into it that much. Interestingly enough, you know, abstract art or uh, representational art, basically it's two different pathways in the brain. Um, it's, we're not really talking about the same thing. Um, neuroscientists have looked at this and it's, you know, the pathways that go through uh, your brain when you're looking at representation start to go into all sorts of other areas and, and abstract art into different areas. Really? Um, so it's almost like it's two different aesthetic experiences. Hmm. What abstract painters do you like? Um, well, I'm reading a book right now uh, by Henry Adams on um, Pollock and his teacher, who was Thomas Hart Benton. Thomas Hart Benton. Um, so the connection between those two I find very interesting. Do you, do, well, I think the, the quote, if I'm quoting it right, and you're reading the book now, to, was he said, the only thing that that kid learned from me was how to drink a fifth a day. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he did say that. But he also learned a lot about rhythm and movement from... Uh, ah, from, from Thomas Hart yeah. Benton. I think you could see that in the yeah, repeated. Absolutely. Okay, interesting. Um, so I'm gonna check that book out though. So uh, what, what, uh, where, what are we looking at here? Well, I started getting interested in uh, what my phone could do because my phone is smarter than I am. And there's this panoramic mode, and if you wiggle it, it chops everything up. And I found that what that did to the space was really kind of fascinating. Oh, so I started okay. doing a few paintings that chopped up space, and this is one of those. Oh, okay, because is, is some of the figures are repeated. And yeah, they, the figures split up, and I, I did a few of those paintings where the figures are split up, but I wasn't terribly happy with that. Uh, I've spent what, 30 or 40 years trying to make the figure whole and then they chop it up. 
I just don't like that as much. But the space, chopping up the space, I like a lot. So, so do you, um, I mean, this is technology, the newest technology is informing one of the oldest, you know, methods of uh, representation. Is there any irony in, in doing this? Um, I'm quite aware that I paint with colored mud on uh, a surface that might be woven canvas or something. So that's pretty, uh, pretty classic and pretty ancient. Um, but modern technologies are great. You know, we just witnessed uh, virtual painting here uh, half an hour ago. And that oh, was, man. That was amazing. The, the Drone you know? Box Studios have a yeah. virtual painting machine. Yeah. Now, you, if you got involved, would you be doing, uh, you know? Not, the, not initially, but no? who, probably it would work. You'd probably that. eventually I fuss who through knows? it. I mean, I probably would yeah. hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, you work exclusively in oil paint? Um, I do some drawings, and I've done a little bit of printmaking in my life. But, but no, like, no, not acrylic or watercolor? No, no, no. no oil paint? oil painting, yeah. you prefer And you prefer oil paint? I prefer oil painting. I think it uh, does more than acrylic can do in terms of uh, luster and depth of uh, feeling. Is there, is there any brand of oil paint that you're like, this sucks, I gotta, I gotta get some different oil? Well, is there, the, is, it's time to talk shit about art the, supplies. Uh, <laughs> the student brands are never as good, so if you spend oh, okay. the money, it's worth it. Okay, so the, the color. Yeah. You, you've unfortunately, learned. that's the way it so, is. You know, you know, there's a lot in life yeah. just like that. I have a tube of vermilion that's $50, you know, it's not a big tube. So, so, so is this a political painting here with uh, Uncle Sam? Uh, yes, it is, and uh, I did this about eight months before the election, actually, so the primaries weren't over, but I guess it was going to be Hillary and, and Donald, so they're both up there in the upper uh, left corner. And um, it started out as, a, I teach at Laguna College of Art and Design, and it started out as a classroom demo. Um, I had all these models posing, and, uh, and it just morphed into this, and it's based on a Montaigne painting from, you know, 16th century or something, so it's pretty ancient. Um, and that was the, about the triumph of Caesar, and uh, so somehow it all makes perfect sense these days. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. So uh, I guess the only question then is who's going to be the Brutus? <laughs> uh, so, that's so, another thing we probably shouldn't talk about. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, but, but, you know, with, with, with politics being what they are, I mean, is, it, are, do, are, is, it, is art more important than ever? Or is, is art going to have to take a back seat to political discussion? I think, uh, you know, you see what's going on with uh, satirical art um, and things like SN SNL. Oh, yeah. I think that stuff's critical, you know, yeah. to uh, get under the guy's skin is, I think, really important. Um, I don't think he looks at paintings too much, although there, there was that one painting that somebody did that he was somebody naked. Did. And it was, and I think it, that it, got it, it caused skin. a lot of, lot of, um, lot of problems. But, and, well, we got, we got another image here. What are, what are we looking at? Uh, that's another uh, sort of morphed space. Now, it's not really based on the phone anymore. That once I'd done a few of them, I could sort of make it up. So this is me in the studio painting. Um, everything in the painting is kind of just invented as I put down a bunch of paint blotches and then started making the stuff up. So uh, there's meteors with faces and uh, flying fire trucks. And so you're really stuff. far from realism. You're using uh, a real, realistic yeah, vehicle to... A lot of this is invented. So in any image I do, like a lot of that figure is invented and the stuff in the background never looked quite like that. So. Um, I, I make a lot of it up. I'm not a, a photorealist or anything like that. I, I think invention is the joy of art, um, and that to copy re reality too much or to copy a photo too much is uh, kind of you know sticking your feet in cement and you're stuck. Don't get stuck there. So while we were talking about art, mm -hmm. there was some art being made All right. of you. That's exciting. From the Skechers seat, Internaliza has uh, drawn. F. Scott Hess. Eliza, that looks great. Wow, 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 wow. I tilt it just it's down there. Perfect. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, and look, wow. Uh, I think you took a few years off, too, so that's great. Whoa, oh, and our, whoa. <laughs> you took it, you know? Yeah, yeah. His, uh, his uh, early 50s, Max, okay. So, F. Scott Hess, Frederick Scott Hess. That's right. Thank you for joining us Thanks, on Matt. Modern Art Blitz. We'll be back right after this.